Praise the Lord and welcome Friday evening. We are in Bible teaching. God is a good God. At this time, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to present us, to guide us through. Let us pray. Our Father, our great high priest, our mediator and our advocate, Lord of glory, God of all grace and the Prince of I humbly bow before you this evening, Lord God, and give thanks and give at this day, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, be thankful unto thee and blesses your holy name. For you are good and your mercy endure it forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, you said we should study to show approve unto you. Lord Jesus, with the desire and passion, the word of God, here we come for you. Lord Jesus, seeking your divine guidance, our eyes, and to enlighten our understanding, oh God, for what you're about, Lord Jesus, to say to us, to listen. My eyes have not seen and ears have not heard things that you have got it for us. Here we are tonight, Lord, bowing down at your feet, giving thanks unto thee, praising thee, O God, knowing that you are great to us, Lord, ever faithful, all of our lives. Lord Jesus Christ, God so glad. Bless us, Lord, and we are children, wherever they are, locally or nationally, internationally, you know everyone that is called by your name. Sealed with the Holy Spirit, I promise. Lord, you know them that are yours. The blessing of God be with them. Hallelujah to God. And you stay with them, Lord, and be with us tonight. Bless us, Lord, and we deliver everything into your hands. Everyone that is at this room is here. Lord Jesus, send a word into everyone's spirit. Set and keep us, O oh God, and let our faith grow. And we know that our faith comes by our hearing. Our hearing is by the word of God. Thank you right now. And any unmentioned mercies, we ask the gratitude to us, Lord, of clarity and utterance be given. Pray and say thank you. Jesus' sake and in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me say welcome one more time, all of us, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't God a good God? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. So, this evening we will be in a look at that. I mean Samuel, first Samuel chapter six, foundation script. Think it links on the screen. Um just what so I'm gonna go a little way back, not just in first Samuel sixteen. But I'd like to go to Ruth chapter four for a few verses of scripture. Just to make a clarity and do um, bring further understanding where David comes. And I think we need to know that David uh, where his ancestors are from. Um, so we are going to Ruth chapter Amen. And we're going to start to read um, uh, first Verse 12. We know about Ruth and Nehomi uh, from Moab. That, um, Nehomi went to Moab with Paul and Chilean and her husband, and all three men died. And uh, two of them were married, but Ruth came back to Bethlehem with Nehomi. Yes, we didn't have anything, but we know that God was in the job for them. So there was a man. That was a kid man, and his name was Bowers. Bowers. I mean, Ruth chapter 4. Now, and Bowers now, as a kid man, they were dead. And no one was destitute, they had nothing. So God sent help, and they needed to have a kid. Kid man means a relative. And saying that, we just remind ourselves that for Jesus to come and help us, we had lost everything for us. He had nothing left. We lost eternal life. We lost uh, fellowship and we lost our identity. 
came and we lost and we couldn't find anyone to help us. God robed himself in human flesh, became like us, so he became a relative, a human, so the king man qualified. Had to be a relative. He had, he had got to have the means to do it, had to be willing to do it. Jesus Christ came, put on humanity, to be related to us, and then as God, he had the, um, the ability to do it. And then he was willing to go to hell. So we know what, what the qualifications of a kinman is all about. Uh, so here we have Naomi uh, went to Moab, but they lost everything. So they came back now to Bethlehem. And she brought back one of the daughter in law named Ruth. And although she um, wanted Ruth to go back to her own people, Ruth, oh, Ruth says, me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Here we have room decided to follow uh, in Nehomi, to the Israel God, which is Jehovah. Right? So she came back. He did a kid man with him. However, the Bible continues to tell us that there was a man, Jacob's son, a fourth son, who had a blessing from Jacob, and his name was Judah. Now, Judah, when Jacob blessed him, that the scepter did not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Shiloh is a prophetic name for Jesus. So, Jesus the sons of uh, um, Jacob, as God's chosen people. Because Isaac is the father of Jacob, and in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Israel is the name of, of the country, and it's now the name of a man. So Jacob had 12 sons. You know, uh, the first four was, three was ruled out. That was and Simeon and Levi because of their misbehavior. Lord then, um, and Jacob decided to bless Judah, the one that was carrying everything to the family and the, the legacy. Judah. But Judah backslid and went down to the Adulamite country and went out from the family and married to a Canaanite. And then he had three sons, and we know this story. They were not very good boys, and because they were misbehaved, the Lord had to, uh, two of them died. Um, so one was left, and there was a young lady down there named Tamar. And there's a story, Genesis 38. That story. And he saw that when uh, she decided to deceive Judah, and uh, Judah, uh, man in love with her, she got pregnant. And then when Judah sent for her to burn her, you know, men in those days had such authority of family honor. But Judah would not be honorable either because he left out of the lineage, the lineage when Jesus would come and went and tried to introduce foreign blood in the holy blood tree. And this is where the problem was. So Tamar then, on the day of her delivery, there were 20 now. Prisoner home. Now, we know that um, according to the scripture, first thing, our first one that comes out of the womb of the matrix belongs to God. Whether it's animal or man, whatsoever, born first, belongs, belongs to Israel. So what they had to do with the midwife is that when it's time for birth, midwife, the Buddha, Bound the first one that came out of the womb, just scarlet thread. Scarlet is a red thread because red is is Israel national color. So she would have bound his hand with a scarlet thread, identify him at first. All right, but so while he came out, and she bound this one, the scarlet thread. He went back into the womb, and the one that was in the womb, came out first. And these two boys came out. 
uh, and is the one that represents Israel went back into the womb. I came out second. I know the Lord made choice of, of the one that came out. Now these two boys named one was Perez and one was Zara. So the Lord made choice of Perez and, so, and, um, and Zara, the one with Scarlet Tread. The Lord didn't choose him. And so the scripture here tells us that these two boys and Perez was the one that the Lord has chosen. Now, if we get to Ruth chapter 4 from verse 12, Ruth chapter 4, verse 12, you see, and said here, um, and let thy house be like the house of Perez. Eh? Whom Tamar bear unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord has given thee of this young woman. Now, the kingman redeemer, that, we, that when Naomi came back to Bethlehem with Ruth, the man was Bowers, and the Lord had made choice of Pharaoh. So now in verse 13, he begins to speak something different, hear something more understanding to everybody. Now, if we read that, he said, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. Uh, Boaz was married to, to um, Leah the harlot. He said here in verse 13, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. Now look at this. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman. A kinsman is one to look after the family, the leader of the family. And the kinsman had to do this um, without a kinsman. That his name may be famous in Israel. So he became the leader. Verse 15. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine own old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, on him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto this boy by Pharez. And verse 17 says, And the women... Her neighbor gave its name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they call his name Obed. Obed. His boy's name was called Obed. He is the father of Jesse. Uh, and Jesse is the father of David. You see where David coming from? The line is where David coming from. Now, and if we go to verse 18, which is much more explainable, he said, Now these are the generation of Perez. Perez begot Hezron. Hezron begot Ram. And Ram begot Aminadab. And Aminadab begot Neashon. And Neashon begot Salmon. But Salmon was married to Rehab the Harlot and he despised in Jericho. Salmon. And verse 21, and Salman begot Boaz. Look at this now. And Boaz begot Obed. Boaz was the father of Obed. And Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David. So this will be a David line is called. David. So when you read that and begin to study that, it's so powerful to understand that lineage which David comes through. Because uh, you remember now that Judah had gone to mix up the lineage, but the Lord worked it back and bring Pharaoh's to Obed, to Noah's Obed, and Jesse, and David. So I, I, I start with, I, 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 I do that background in that we can have further understanding of where we're going. Because we are going over to First Samuel chapter 6. Now, when it comes unto Israel, Israel then had God as their king. God was their king. 
And the people decided that they want to monarchy rule. Monarchy means uh, king rule. They want somebody to rule them. Yet God was the one that was looking after them. But they said they wanted a king as other people. Now, you see, they didn't say God must give them a king like himself. They said they want a king like other people. People live around the nation around like kings uh, um, that was ruling them, but things were not good. And when the people said that Samuel, because Samuel was the priest and prophet at the time, Samuel went to God with it. He was so upset. People had God ruling them, but then they changed. There's something at the end of them because they saw what other people. Story. Beloved ones, let me just say this. We are the children of the Most High God. We do not watch what other people do. We watch what God is doing. You know, because today, the kind of things that's going on in the world, we just want to see over the end of the We just want to take in others well. We don't want to be like that. We want to be like Jesus and stay like how oh, Jesus wanted to be like himself. God is only, God only asks us to. Um, and he wants us to do. Say, be ye holy as I am holy. And the Lord said, men are always to pray. Uh, men are always to pray. That's what God wants to do. And so, we have, when the people said, they want a king like other people. Uh, and so when God heard it, Samuel got upset. God said to Samuel, don't get upset because it's not you in the covenant. Covenant him, God. So what God did, God gave them a king. Uh, and then uh, Lord gave them a king. And the story continues. It was him by the rejection of God and the want uh, a man to rule them. What the Lord did was cast well, to um, take a king from Jesse, uh, Jesse, sorry, from Kish. Now, Kish comes from the tribe of Benjamin. Why did God take from the tribe of Benjamin? Because um, David, um, Jacob had 12 sons, and uh, the last of his son, name was Benjamin. Now, Benjamin was born. When, uh, when Jacob name was changed by God, Israel. Israel means a prince of God. We find that Benjamin was the only one that was there. He was the line of line of descent. If you want to get a king uh, or somebody royal, you have to get it from a royal background. Now we have Benjamin, the, the last son of, of, of Jacob. He born a prince. And so it was that you had Judah, who had the Messianic line, you had Benjamin, who had the princely line. So when the kingdom, well, remember when the kingdom was divided, so the, the two tribes of the southern kingdom was Benjamin and Judah. Those were the two tribes that were at the south, and the ten tribes were up north, and the Jer Jeroboam. So we find that. If they want it, so Lord uh, told Samuel that there's a unnamed Kish in the tribe of Benjamin, very tall, above, high above all the rest, and he stands out a lot. Well, let him crown and give the people. So this man was Saul. And we know the story that Saul was at will and was disobedient to God, and he would do what he wants to do. and um, he, he would not listen and he would not obey. After two years he was a king, then the Lord allowed the evil spirit to come upon him because he decided to execute the office of the priest, the king, and the prophet. The three offices in the Bible, no man can ever accept or try to execute, and that's prophet, the priest, and the king. No man has got those three offices beside Jesus. Well, Saul was a man, he prophesied, he was a king, right? But, but he was, uh, was not a priest. 
uh, a priest. Samuel had a chief role. Of it. Samuel was a judge. Samuel was a, a prophet, was a priest, and a judge, and a king. Now Saul was a king, and Saul prophesied, but Saul was not a priest. So the only man that had a threefold office in scripture is Jesus. And Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. And you know that when the wise men came, when he was uh, trying to search for him, and the wise men brought three gifts. And they, were, they brought three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold was for the king. And, and then frankincense is for the office of the priest. And myrrh is for the office of the prophet. So this is the threefold office. No man don't have that office like Jesus. But what Saul did, Saul would not wait until someone the priest come to sacrifice. He as a king and a, and, a, and a prophet, Samuel did not come on time, told him to wait. What he did was he decided to execute the office of the priest as well, so that the people were waiting and the enemy was around. And so he decided to execute the office of the priest. Because of that, he was ruled out. Um, the, the Malachites, then he was told to destroy them. And Saul saved the best of the Amalekites as far as he's concerned. The Lord said that he should wipe them out, get rid of the Amalekites. None should not remain alive. And Saul disobeyed that. So here we have Saul, a king now. After two years, God, he was spirit of him. Saul. Uh, and you know, Saul had to remain on the throne for a further 38 years because Saul spent 40 years. David also, just remember that, that David spent 40 years uh, um, and Joe, Saul was 40 years, Solomon was 40 years, and even the, the prophet Samuel was 40 years. And that was the visionary period of time God had given these men. So he moved. When the, when the evil spirit was upon Saul, he was still sitting at the throne. Now, the reason why God did allow Israel to be winning battles even at that time, it wasn't Saul that was winning the battles. It was God himself. And the office of the, of the king is a divine office. And because of that, you know, it doesn't change. So when Saul died at Mount Gilboa, and David became king. It's the same office David had to go and take because the office of the king is a divine office. Not based upon man, it's based upon God. Right? It's like if you have in your church a, a, a leader, a bishop, or a presider, whosoever it is, and if he has done something that the church has to go against it. Um, now, it doesn't, nothing, nothing is wrong with the office, but something is wrong with the man. So what God would do, people would still get baptized and get the Holy Ghost, because God would not allow his people to be punished for something else that somebody else has done. So what the Lord would do, allow the church to continue with baptism and messages, and the church would still grow. But he would deal with the man, fix is still there, the office of the bishop is divine. So when you see a man sitting here or sitting like this and God in there always, very important to remember that. So here we have uh, Saul now. And Saul did disobey. And Samuel rebuked him. God had left him. So when we get to chapter 16, now our first Samuel, that's where our reading is tonight. Read. Uh, first chapter 16, first Samuel. Um, the Lord had rejected Saul. Uh, reject, rejected Saul. And verse 34 of chapter 15, said First Samuel, verse 34 of chapter 16, 15, I should say, chapter 15, it reads, Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Samuel didn't bother with him from there. Nevertheless, 
hearts. Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over his. Talking about disappointment, God was disappointed in him of his behavior and, and how he became disobedient and self centered and wanted to do everything his own way and not even consulting God. So here we have um, Saul then rejecting. But Samuel, with a heart, a good heart, this prophet, knew that Saul had such a great opportunity to be a leader of Israel, then um, disqualify himself. What disqualified him? He disqualifies himself, judged himself unfaithful, unworthy. And because of that, he lost. He, he, he remained for 48 years, but he died at Mount Gilboa, and not just him, and his two sons, Melchitua and Jonathan, died at Mount Gilboa. So we move into chapter 16. Now. Let's look at David. Now, do you know that David, uh, Obed, and uh, David, you yes, see, we just looked at all of those over in Ruth, right? Now, the same David is going to become king. This is where we need to get uh, our minds settled on chapter 16 to see what's going to happen. First Samuel 16. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Because he was mourning over Saul. I know I like the attitude of this man. You know, when something happened to somebody that you, know, you should mourn and sad. You can't be happy and be glad when something wrong go wrong with Saul. We need to be very sympathetic and compassionate when something happens to anyone. So Samuel here mourned for Saul. The, the Lord said, why is he still mourning for Saul? I, that I, God, have rejected him from reigning over Israel. He said, fill now thine own with oil. And go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. But now you see, God now going to choose a king. God says, is that one? Uh, he has provided to rule over both the Jesse. Yeah? All right? And the same, remember we read in, in Ruth, Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David. All right? We always remember that. That's in Ruth where we come from. So God said, look what he said. I have provided, God said, I have provided me a king among his sons. Now remember this now. God didn't ask them to provide the king. God said, he God has provided the king. So let us see how sometime, um, uh, sometime how mankind really step out of line. And Samuel said to God in verse 2, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. But Saul is that type of person. But if, if, if Saul knew is another man who'd been raised up to be king, that will be dead for that person. So, so, so Samuel was a bit worried about this. But he said to God, how, how can I go for if Saul Hear about this of a dead man. Right? So he said, He will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And the Lord give him a word. I said, Go and take an heifer with you and go down to Bethlehem and say that you have come to sacrifice unto the Lord. That's, that's what the priests always do. The prophet, when they are put from areas, they need to go and offer sacrifice, all these things. You know, and so hear what the Lord said to him take an effort and go down there. So, here, uh, intention was to anoint a king, but then he, he, he used another way to get him. The Lord said, take an effort and go down there. But the real intention was to anoint the king. All right, but to keep everybody guessing until that done, if they would know why Samuel is there, that was say he came to sacrifice. Verse 3 and call Jesse 
Lord said, we're going to call you, see. So they sacrifice. And I, and I want them to keep watching how many times the word letter I, God is speaking all the way through this, giving instructions. God say, I will show thee what thou shalt do. God say, I will show thee. For man can never be and have to do not to step on the line. When God say one thing, they say something different. And from the day he said to Adam, the day you eat us of that truth, you shall surely die. They went the opposite direction and so they got trouble. So the believer today must begin to understand that what was going on. They got keep his command. God disobedient. Disobedience was the first sin. Sin of disobedience caused the problem of the world today. One sin. You see, I remember I said it some time ago that God did not. Uh, when he created Adam, he did not ask Adam to worship him. Him God, no. I did not ask him to do that. Not even. The Lord asked him to obey him. You know, if you're obeying God, you're worshiping him. Yes. No matter what you do, if you don't obey him, you're not worshiping him. So worship God is to obey what he says. That's all we have to do. Keep his commandment. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. My commandment is what I say in the word not to do. But then, when he told Adam that, they went and did the opposite. And they decided to eat up the fruit of the tree and cause this enormous problem on this planet. Not just on the planet, in the heavens. The sun and the moon and the stars are the clouds. God meant he's going to take up there as well. And the sun is going to explode, moon turn into blood, and the stars are going to fall from it. So sin did not just hit the earth and corrupt the people. It hits the heavens and earth. It's the heaven and earth that pass away. A new heaven and a new earth. We must always remember that. So let's read verse 3 again. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show him what thou shalt do. God said, I'll show what you do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. God was very clear on that, right? He will name, he will appoint. Verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake. Now look at this now. He did that by getting the effort to get out to Bethlehem. All that went by, all right. And came to Bethlehem. So the passageway to get to Bethlehem was now clear and it went fine because he obeyed the instructions that God gave to him that God gave to him and he followed them and now he got into Bethlehem without Saul knowing anything about his intention. So his intention is to anoint the king. But he used something different to take them off what he really wants to do. And so he used the effort and sacrifice to turn him away from his real intention. But his real intention was to do what? Anoint David as king. The Lord told him what to do. Now, he said, he came to Bethlehem. And in verse 4, he said, And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Come as thou peaceably. Because when the prophet turns up into a town or a country of where it is, the people tremble. Because they know it's coming with a word from God. But the people, this time the prophet wasn't coming with a word from God. But the people, he had not said anything, but the people started to tremble. They tremble because they think the prophet was coming with something judgmental, something to uh, for God, that God have against them. But so when the Yes, when all when they want to see the prophet turn up, they, they believe that something is happening and something is going to happen. They said, Come as thou peaceably. And he said, Samuel answered, peaceably, meaning I didn't come with anything judgmental. Peaceably. He said, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. He said, You come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse 
and his sons. Now Jesse had, Jesse had seven more sons and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. No problem with that. He came to the sacrifice. Six. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab. Now the Lord told Samuel that he should wait and he will show him now, what was Samuel did here? Yeah. And it came to pass when they were come, verse 6, that he looked on Eliab, Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. Now you see, immediately they begin to do something wrong. The Lord told them that they should wait and he will show them who they should anoint as king. But the his humanity overtook him and he started to name. Who he think the king should be. You see how man can just turn against God. All he had to do was wait. But the Lord said, I will show you who you should anoint as king. All right. So Eliab, because he was the eldest one, said, and he said, surely this Lord anointed him before him. He was not. So, you know, when anything that we have to be careful what we do in, in church, not to anoint the wrong man. Because if we anoint the wrong man, all you're anointing is trouble. Right? So before we make any anointing on anyone and on the mission, make sure that we have the man with the anointing. There's no need to put something in his head or her head and then say you're anointed. No, it don't work like that. God must choose us to know who the real person is. And many failures in churches have, that has happened to because there have been consultation uh, to God to what we need to do and not happen. So we're going to use our own flesh and self to choose and we're going to run into trouble. Right? So Eliab was the wrong one. God said, I've not chosen. Uh, verse 6, he says, I've not chosen. Surely the Lord anointed it before. No. Right? But the Lord said unto Samuel, Now Eliab was uh, in the army with Saul. So he's already a conscript in the army. So he had some military understanding, you know, of how the army and battles works. So here we have um, Samuel decide that if he's in the army, Saul is in the army, so God will choose somebody from the army. No. So hear what he said in, is in, in verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his what? Countenance. Yeah. Or on his height. Or his stature. Because I have refused him. <laughs> but the Lord see it not as man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the this is it. When we're looking at man outside, we look good and tall and I'm like Saul, you know, and strong. I don't look at that. We look at that. But God looking at the heart, God says, uh, he's not like that. So that's why the Lord has to choose for us. He can't just choose anybody. Yeah? It's the heart. Yeah? God looking at the heart. All right? Then, so first one down, Liam, eldest one, one that they thought would be favorite. But God had not chosen him. God said, no. God said, I have not chosen him. He okay. probably would surprise them. But the reason why it surprises them, they have not listened to what God had said. To what God had said, they began to do their own choosing. And they got it wrong every time. All right. Then Jesse called the second son, verse 8, Abinadab, and make him pass before Samuel, walk before him. You know, this guy dressed up in the rabbinical lounge, you know, and everything, you know, walking before Samuel and Jesse. So now he said here in verse 8, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither and the Lord chosen this. You know, it's, what the, it's what the Lord called him. This. 
Now, uh, this is not a real nice word to call it. I say, this is a this. And I'm not, no name. He said, I told him this. He didn't say he, you know, he said this. In other words, there was no way near it. God said, I told him this. When the scripture began to speak about an individual like that, you know, that God has got nothing to do with it. I have not chosen this. Thank right? God in heaven. All right? Verse 9. So that's the end of um, that's the end of um, Abinadab. So I have gone out the way. Abinadab gone out the way. So because what mankind began to choose and it's not going to work. God said, I have not chosen this. Eh? Eh? What a thing. Eh? And if God say you're at this, no matter what you think, I am a prince, God to know you're at this. Right? Verse 9. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. <laughs> the Lord had not chosen this. So we have to be careful who we choose and who we pick. I know we put in a God's business because we see from the outside but we cannot deal with the heart. So that's the, that's the message here this evening. Okay? We look on the outside but God knows what's in God. So we allow the choosing and God do the choosing. Now we're going to get it wrong. Okay? Verse 9, the Lord had not told the ship so Shammah been ruled out. Elijah been ruled out and Abinadab been ruled out. All right? Let's move along. All right? The Bible said now. The Bible said, what do you Seven and seven brothers. Okay? Verse 10, it says, Again, Jesse made the seven of his son pass before Samuel. So, they, so what they did now, allowed them to walk in front of them and march them up and down, march them up and down, looking at their their physique and the height and how big they are and how long they've been in the army and they were conscripted in the army and fight battles. God don't look at that. God wants a man with his after his own heart. Right? So again, verse 10, Jesse made seven of his own path before Samuel. And Samuel now realized something is wrong. Now, look what God had told him. They, they disobeyed what God said from they, 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 he got into bed. Yeah. So he said, as Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord had not chosen these. So they compromised these two are these. God said they are these. He doesn't chosen these. These mean the lot of them. So Samuel never have something to say because Samuel said unto Jesse, because they were amazed because they, they are choosing and God hasn't selected none of them. Now remember now, Samuel has the horn that the Lord did tell him, get a horn of heart. I'm going to go to Jesse else. Right? Yeah. If you notice the verse, chapter 16, verse 1. He said, and the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil. So if, if you got to anoint somebody who has the oil, you have to use a horn. So they must not use nothing metal that man made because horn is God made. Horn comes from the animal. Right? So that's why you have to use a horn of oil to anoint the one that God wants to anointing. Because our, the horn is not man-made, it's God-made. So the horn of the, of, of the ram's horn or the, I'm from the effort, you know, to that horn that naturally comes from the animal. So so, so here we have uh, Samuel, the horn of oil, waiting to pour it on somebody. Else. The oil was in the house. The horn was in the house. The prophet was in the house. The people was in the house and they couldn't find nobody to anoint. Uh, couldn't find no one to anoint. Yet the house was full now. And I, I believe Samuel might have taken the horn and turned it over with the oil. But it froze up and it wouldn't come out. 
the I wouldn't come up. Yeah, they were the wrong ones they wanted to anoint. And God says, I will show thee who you need to anoint. God said that. And I'm sure they had understood. All right? In verse 11, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there all thy children? That's all the children you have? Is there any more? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come either. Now, you notice something here? That Jesse has not even told Samuel what his name is. Adam said the youngest one, and he's in the He remained yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth. So he was in the bushes. Now, they, they want to set the sacrifice, sacrificial table and they have everything ready. All these guys dress up in their high priestly clothes, rab rabbinical uniform. But the, the one that God wants to anoint, he was in the bush. Nobody, nobody looked bothered about him. They were going to sit down and have a meal without him. He was in the bush. Right? They didn't care about him as far as they're concerned, he was. Just like a nose gas. Because his mother was not the same mother as the rest of them. You see, and, and, and when you begin to search the scripture, you find that out. So they kind of just put him on side. He was outside in the bushes. He turned into the sheep and the and the, and the, and the, and the cattle. All right? So let's read verse 11 again. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there here all thy children? And he said, there remained yet the youngest, the youngest. Sir. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. They have him as a shepherd. These are good things for him, good things to build his character. He was a shepherd. Uh, and Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come either. In other words, if if if, if one of them amongst the seven, they fit the bill. David would not be invited. He would be down there in the bushes looking after the animal and they forgot all about it. He did not even tell Samuel what his name was. He said, youngest one in the bush down there. Huh? He said, go and fetch him. Get him now. And let him come here. All right? Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. No, he was ruddy. He was ruddy. We're looking. And with all of a beautiful countenance. Nice looking young man. And goodly to look to. See the qualification of this man, the outside of this man, but he has. He looked like a sheep. Talked like a sheep. Tell you a shepherd. He walked like a sheep. He says that he said that brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance, a good to look to. And the Lord said, Arise. No God speak, you know. God has, the Lord said, What? Well, Arise, anoint him, but this is he. You see, so David was not a this. David is a he, but all the rest of them was not this. The Lord said, This is he. Isn't that something? The one that they've forgotten all about. Beloved man, I tell you this. Don't worry too much. You just stay with God in you know? Because even when mankind forget about you, God will never forget. And if the Lord put a prophetic thing on your life, wait for it, it must come to pass. Yeah? Don't worry what others will say. Because God's word will not return unto him. Boy. God is sovereign. Whatever God say he do, it will happen. So just hang on in there and wait. Hmm? Just hang on and wait. Don't worry. And sometimes if the Lord don't move at the same time, he's teaching us patience. Because yeah? one of the attributes of God is long-suffering. But the long-suffering of God will get repentance. So sometimes we need to, uh, you know, start to learn a bit of patience and wait. Now, this is he. The Lord said, this is he. That's in verse 12. And now let's see the manifestation of the oil in the horn. 
Because remember now, he had the oil in the horn and it was in the house. Everybody was in the house. And they couldn't find a man in the house to pour the oil on. Nobody could. So the man supposed to receive the oil was in the bush. <laughs> was in the bushes. That's, that's where he is. Just sit up. I don't think like man. In the bushes. But nobody expected it gonna be. Eh? As far as they were concerned, he was ruled out completely. But God said, no. God said, get him. And when he as he came to the door, God said, This is his he. All right. So let's see the manifestation of the oil. All right. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. I don't to get a bang about it. Because the oil that was in the horn that was froze up, when he turned it on David, just watch him. The anointing come upon him from that day. God's chosen. Well, if God is going to anoint you, nobody going to stop you. Yeah. God has a work for you to do and he's going to anoint you. No matter who make a selection, you know that you're anointed. God's going to anoint you. God is in the business of anointing his people. But David was a man after his own heart. A shepherd in the bushes, finding the sheep. That's why the Bible said, the Lord is my, David wrote that, the Lord is my shepherd. We, when we go to Israel, we went to Israel, and we went to the valley of the shadow of death. When we went around there, we had David all with him. And you don't want to go around there too, too much. As it says, it's a very dreadful place for you. Say, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Are thou art with me? The sheep used to go around there with the sheep. Yeah, and have them uh, um, grazing. Yeah, look after his sheep. And the, they will know that the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Because he recognized that he's a sheep and God is the real shepherd. So, so he said, um, the Samuel decided now it's time for him to leave. Because he also recognized that he was disobeying God. And have to take it away from them and do it himself. Uh, and no matter how someone going to pour that oil, would not leave the horn until David arrived. So that the door, God said, This is he. Isn't that something? God identify him himself. Uh, so don't worry. Love it once. God will identify you himself. He knows us. All right. So he rose up and went to Rima. That's where someone came from. That's where his house was. Rima. Verse 14. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Or Saul. For this Lord crowned David. Anointed. And yet the spirit departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. See, remember now that spirit didn't come from it. Evil spirit, the Lord put us on. So we have to be very careful. Yeah, some things will happen. And you want to know why why these things happening to find out from the Lord why. Some things are happening. Evil spirit, God put on it. So God can put an evil spirit upon any man won't give himself. So we need to behave ourselves. And be as who God wants us to be. Saul continues doing what he's doing. Now, verse 15. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now an evil spirit from God trouble at thee. And you see, it, it, it can't leave it. God put no evil spirit on him. Can, no? can't leave. He will stay there as long as God wants it to him. Let our Lord, verse 16, now command thy servants 
which are before thee. The Siko Tamat, who is a cunning player on an harp. It shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his heart and thou shalt be well. You hear what he's saying? I need a man, a man that has some understanding of playing the harp. Maybe it was a musician, it was a harpist. And, and they want somebody to come and play for song. But when the evil spirit takes him, calm him down. So now they're looking for this man. And Saul said, Provide me of a man that can play well and bring him to me. That verse 17. But then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. So they have identified this man. But then they realize, let's see who it is. Therefore, Saul, verse 19, Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. So look at that. Not to send one of his son who will on the top, top rank and in the army. He says, send me the one who's looking after the sheep. <laughs> Is it when God ready to lift you up? The king said for him now. Separate boy to come. Yes. He who I said, make sure send the one that looks after the sheep. So he got an identification that he's a sheep shepherd. Looks after the herd. The herd. David, thy son, which with the sheep. And Jesse took and asked, in with bread. Now, Saul said for David, Jesse's father didn't just send David. He decided to send presents for the king as well. And Jesse took and asked, verse 20, in with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul. Here we have Saul going to meet David now for the first time. And David came to Saul, verse 21, and stood before him. So he noticed that David was crowned king, but he didn't help say what a truth. He went straight back to the fields to look after his sheep. King in the bushes. Looking after sheep. Oh my God, I love this. Verse 22. Verse 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. So you notice Saul is promoting him as, as he arrives to be his armor bearer. Because Saul never see a man like this. In all the years of being, being king and taking people to war, there was something special about this one. It's David. And Saul said to Jesse, I was saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me. Verse 22. For he hath found favor in my sight. So they sent for David to the palace now. So he's coming from the bushes to the palace. Yes, Saul. What a promotion. Big time. The anointing. So the anointing lifts him up. Anointing promotes men. You know. have the anointing moving from, from low level to higher level. Yeah. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hands. So Saul was refreshed 
and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So David used to come and play the harp, and when the music, and when he heard the music, the evil spirit now departed from him. So David was now the king, anointed in front of his brethren. Brothers knew that he was the king. Brothers were conscripting the army for someone. And they knew that their brother was, but they kept silence. So now, this, this thing arose in chapter 17. Now the Philistines, Bible said that the Philistines gathered together. Philistines gathered together at Sokoth, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Sokoth and Ezekiah in Ephes Damin. So here we have uh, that war come up against Judah. And Saul and the men, following the men, I mean, chapter 17 of Israel, were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. A war against Israel. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. Valley. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. In other words, he was well fortified. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. Oh, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. This man is Goliath. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battles in array? Am not I a Philistine? And ye servants of Saul? So is he a man? For you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be our servants and serve us. It's the condition for this fight. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. This day, give me a man that we may fight together. Now David was now acquainted with Saul. David was not down by the battlefield. He was down by the battlefield. But the Bible said in verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. See, they're afraid of the Philistine. Gentile man, big, huge giant, but they were afraid of him. You see, if the anointing was upon Saul, he would be afraid of him, but Saul knew that he was weak. Uh, when the, the enemy comes out of, uh, at him, he's weak, greatly afraid. Uh, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrata of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. Now this is where now David is going to get down to where from this. So Jesse, 
and he had eight sons, and the man went among them, or an old man, in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul. You know this here. Three eldest son Eliab, and Minadab, and Shammah. They went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went to the battle was Eliab, the firstborn. Next unto him was Abinadab, and the third was Shammah. But they went down because they followed Saul. Now, they followed a man with an evil spirit. But now, David was the youngest. And the three elders followed Saul. David don't follow Saul. Saul only commanded David to come to him. He was to play for him. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So David then, although he had um, been in the palace and come now, somebody that moves up the ladder, he still remember his sheep. David used to return to make sure that his sheep was all right. You could see that the, the great thing about this man, if he could and decided to look after sheep the way he does, much more people. But this was a great man. And the Philistine drew nearer morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. So in morning and evening for 40 days, that means he 80 times that this Philistine come out asking for a man to come and fight. Asking for a man. Say, Give me a man. And any man that will, will win, then if the Philistine win, then Israel will be their slaves. And if the Philistine won, then Israel won, then the Philistine. But that was the deal here. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented themselves for 40 days. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of his watch guard and these ten loaves run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of the thousand. And look how thy brethren faith and take their pledge. So now, somehow, Jesse realized that something was not right on the battlefront. And he said, You're going to send David down on the other something for the captain and virgin and those. So he sent David. Verse 19 said, No Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So the fight was on. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a key. But you know this? He would not even leave the sheep by themselves. You know, he was so concerned about sheep. It's a good shepherd. But sheep, he would not leave them by themselves. But he leave the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host were going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array Army against army. So the fight was on. But Israel was in trouble. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words 
And David heard him this time. David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled, they ran. But no one might run from him. The Philistine and circumcised man. When they saw the man in verse 24, they fled from him. And they were so afraid of this giant. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? Know this? Sight walker. Have you seen this man? And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father house free in Israel. She promises for anyone now who killed his child. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistines that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who is he? And the people answered and after this manner, say, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And he lied his eldest brother heard. Now, you know this here, now the problem was not really the giant Goliath for David. The problem was his brother Eliab. Brother Eliab, one that the Lord says, don't shows him. And they all saw that David was anointed king right in front of their eyes. They know when they saw him come, they knew he was a king. David. Well, you know, them no have no appreciation for him. Jesus says a man is not without honor only in our own country. That's what Jesus. Here we have David now upon the war, upon the front back and front. Elijah, when he said, verse 28, the eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab hunger was kindled against David. And he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom art thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. But you see, his eldest brother don't want him there. Eh? Want to send him back and begin to talk him down about the few sheep and you, you just come here to come because you want to show your pride. In other words, who you left with a few sheep? Yeah. I don't mind to see the back. David said, What have I done? I have not a call. It said, Is there not a cause? David said, It's a problem and it's a cause to fight. But Eliab is a bigger problem to David than the giant. He won't have hurt you. I don't want to see him excel. I knew that the, he had the anointing, could have destroyed the giant, but he wanted to send him back. That he don't, no glory don't come to him. That no praise don't, don't come to him. No thank you, give thank you, don't come to him. And God, he knew that, they, that, that, that David could do this. All right? David said, it is not a cause. And he turned from him towards another and spake up in the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and Saul sent for him. See, when men try to block you, God find another way to get you. Try to block him. I want to have him there. Try to talk him down. Huh? Discredit him. Want him. But when men try to discredit you, I lift you up, you know, because we have the judge of all the earth is Jesus, the judge of all the earth. <laughs> and when the words were heard, 
which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. David, everybody was afraid, some was hiding. David said he will go out and fight with him. With this uncircumcised Philistine who is trying to talk down Israel. David said, I'll fix him. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go out against this Philistine. Or thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came out a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So he's telling one of his wilderness bush experience. A lion came out. And he said, he grabbed the lion by the, he said, Get the lamb out of the mouth of the lion. That's what he's interested in. But he said he grabbed the lion by his beard and smote him, took the lamb out of his mouth and rescued the lamb. Eh? He said, I smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the beard. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has denied the harm is of the living God. David said, moreover, hear what David said, the Lord had that delivered me out of the paws of the lion. Oh, this he didn't. This side say is him who delivered. He said, the Lord delivered. Always give the glory to God, man. When they give the glory to the Lord, you are right. He said, the Lord that delivered out of the boat, paws of the lion and out of the paws of the beard. He will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Saul harmed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he harmed him with a coat of mail. So when you look at David, you don't see David, you see Saul. Because he's wrapped up in Saul's clothes. Now that was a strategy for Saul. Because if David go there in Saul's armor and his coat and everything and slew the giant, they're gonna give Saul the credit. But they were, see what they, and David knew this. He was trying to steal the glory from David. And verse 39. And David girded his sword upon his heart. And he, he has swayed to go, for he had not proved it himself, he has not proved the garments of Saul. You know, we have to use what we, what the Lord give us. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved it. And David put them off himself, take them off. You see, David, you see, when you're used to fasting and prayer, that's the weapon you have in. But the weapon of our warfare is not honor, but it is mighty true God to the pulling down the struggle. So you don't need Saul's shield and Saul's coat and armor. No, we have the Holy Ghost. David had the anointing. He had the anointing. So he put off Saul's armor, what they tried to put on and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five small stones out of the brook. You notice now, why do you know what? See where these five stones came from out of the water. They were in the brook water. They were lying in the water. Five small stones out of the brook. And put them in a shepherd bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. 
sling. And he drew near to the Philistine. Now the five stone, you got to think of grace. G-R-A-C-E. Five, five stones. So on the water. Right? And the Philistines came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he is but a youth and ruddy of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Have I a dog? Thou comest to me with the staves. And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said, David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, unto the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, carnal weapon, look at this now, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee and take thy head from, thy, from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you out into our hands. They came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and do die to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards him and the army to meet the Philistines. And David put his hand in his bag, took thence a one stone, and slung it and smote the Philistines in, in his forehead, that the stone sunk in his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. Now, I'm going to see this. Now, the, the stones hit him in the forehead. He didn't fall backwards. He fell frontwards. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. So even the giant know what to bow. When the stone hit him. But you see, when he ran towards the giant, and when he released that stone out of the sling, took it from there and moved it with such speed to hit the giant right inside, right in the center of the he fell down. David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and a, smote the Philistines and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood up on the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head. Therefore, therewith, and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, everybody ran. <laughs> so we need to realize that God is the one who wins the battle for us. He fights for us. He wins battle for us. All we have to do is to obey him. Eliab, David's brother, was a bigger endurance to him more than the giant Goliath. See, they knew that David was a king because he was anointed in front of them, right? In their very presence in the house of Jesse. And they knew it. But they just can't accept it. When God is promoting you, the enemy will come against you. But don't worry. Don't worry. God have a way to take you out and promote you. So don't know you are David as in the, the field, the push experience, where the lion and the bear slew, slew them. Nobody saw that. That was his private victory. The Lord is going to promote him publicly. So from the bushes where the lion and the bear was, David in his victories there, but then the Lord took him public and wanted a public victory and he killed in the giant that came out against Israel. When all that happened, the people 
not begin to give a problem. Because the choir, choir began to sing. And instead of they give God the praise, they began to sing, Saul has slain his thousand, but David is ten thousand. Now, when did they begin to sing that? If they had our singer and say, God, we thank you for killing the, the, the enemy. No problem. From the moment they say, Saul is slaying his thousand, David is ten thousand. That thing rise up into Saul. Saul realized now that he would increase while David started to be increased. Eh? And he knew that his, his descendants were threatened because Jonathan, his son, was second in command for the, for, the, for the succession of Saul that was on his way out. Jonathan knew it too. So Jonathan told David that, and gave David his coat of arm, gave David his sword, and, and then surrendered to David and said, I will serve you. Eh? Good lad, Jonathan was. Because he realized if a man is better than you, let him carry on. Don't fight him. Support him. And David support. And uh, Jonathan support David. And although Jonathan died in Mount Gilboa because he followed his father through tradition, brothers of them met to tour. And then there is uh, um, Jonathan uh, gave the same day with Saul. When Saul stopped hearing from God, he went to a witch. You know, so we have to be careful in the final self going to us other people, all the people, all the God, yeah. all the other people, and say, "Go to look help." Your help is in God. Yeah. That's what I say. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they what? They stumble and fell. Not true. Psalm 27. God bless you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep on reading this. Is gonna, over the next few days, you're going to be having, I believe, the same scriptures. Um, Sunday, we are David we are being anointed in front of his brethren. So the anointing is needed to fight battles. Because there are many lions and bears and champions in our community. But we need to have the what? Anointing. You have the anointing. You can't fight beer and lion. You have some beers and lions and go lions around the place. So we need to get what? The anointing. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good to see Sister Cynthia Gardner here. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can see my nephew, the Jephta McLean from Jamaica. God bless you, son. God bless you. Amen, Sister. Uh, uh, Sister Annette Callum Clark, God bless you. And Sister Geraldine, God bless you. Brother Rupert and Sister, Sister Rupert and Sister Sue. Yes, Sister Sue, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. El, God bless you, Elder Donovan from up north. God bless you, sir. It's Angelina Martin, Amen. And there are more behind there. God bless you, Sister Mel, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Keep on studying the word of God. Okay? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than the middle of this word. Yes, he gives the dividing of soul, of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow. The discerning of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Keep one another in prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you. We worship and we praise you. We honor you, Lord, for this very moment that you have been with us, Lord, and have opened our eyes and our understanding. You know, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are a spirit and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Know that the battle is not ours, but it's yours, God. So, Lord Jesus Christ, help us to humble ourselves at your feet. Have the spirit of humility. He said, we draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto us. And we submit ourselves unto you, and you will lift us up. Bless us now, we do pray, and we deliver every one of us into your hand. Bless our bishop at this time, and his wife, and his family. Lord, we do pray. 
all the saints in Bethel, locally, nationally, and internationally. That the Lord be with us all. Hey, thank you right now. Jesus name, amen and amen. And just let us say the benediction and now may the abiding grace for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and our Father, faithful fellowship, communion of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, rest, remain and abide with us all until Jesus come again. I bless you all in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.